in a lot of the relationships in your life. Because this is like a ripple effect. Everything kind of affects everything. What about questions like these? Um, what brings you joy? What, what makes you angry? You know, where are you, where are you in your emotional life? Are, are your, where, where are your emotions right now at this point in your life? What, what, is, what is your mental health like? What about your physical life? Are, are you neglecting anything physically about this body that God has given us? What about your relationship to the greater world? And what about, hmm, this is interesting, what about your relationship to your enemies? All of that will help indicate where your spiritual red dot is. And that is going to take something that I call spiritual introspection. And as I've thought about even this over the past month, I've thought, okay, introspection is not just looking on the inside of myself and being honest because you know what? It's very hard to be honest with yourself. Oh, you, might, you know how many, you know about blind spots we have. hard to be honest. I learned this, I learned this um, the hard way about a month ago because I had to learn about spiritual introspection based upon how I came across to others. Maybe I didn't mean for it to come across like that, but I had to come face to face with in one area of my life, how I was coming across to someone else, how I was making an impact on them in real time, in real relationships. And most of the time, it's my wife that points things out like that. And that's very hard to be introspective when I have to agree, <laughs> when I have to come to the point where I agree with others who love me and who see me differently than I see myself and say, yeah, that, that, boy, I'm coming across in a very unhealthy way. And th that's part of what our red dot includes as well. You know, what are, what are the people who love you? What are the people who are close to you saying about you? And are you going to blow that off? Or are you going to think that maybe you need to address that? Because it's all... And I knew I had way more notes <laughs> for what time I had, so maybe we'll just continue some of this throughout the, the Sunday school hour as well. But I, I, I want to I close with this. If you take the relationships in Scripture, the, the analogies or the word pictures that Scripture gives us for our relationship with God, you can put those in an ascending order. And here's what I mean by that. On the bottom, um, Isaiah 64, 8, I am the clay, he is the... Okay, so, you know, we're just a lump of clay. We're, it's not, we're not breathing, we're not even, you know, we're not, we're not alive, it's just clay. And we are totally 
uh, surrendered to the will of the potter, right? If we go up, then we have sheep and shepherd. Okay, we're a little further up on the food chain now. Uh, we, we, are, we are breathing. We, we, we have this relationship with someone called the shepherd. But at that point, it's just kind of like uh, feed me, take care of me, hunt for me when I'm lost, and keep me out of trouble. If we keep going up, this ascending metaphors of our relationship with God. Then we have slave master. To be honest with you, that's where I spent most of my life. I 